It's a tourist attraction now, this park overlooking Managua, capital of Nicaragua, celebrating the victory in 1979 of Sandinista rebels over the U.S.-backed Somoza dictatorship. The tanks are quiet. The new king of the hill is Augusto Sandino, who gave his name to the revolutionists. And the once Marxist president, Daniel Ortega, whom the U.S. tried to overthrow in the 1980s with rebels called Contras, has been re-elected. Now he's luring foreign money with a pro-business pitch. Welcome to the new Nicaragua, billed as the safest spot in Latin America. Tourism is growing slowly but steadily as Nicaragua tries to cash in on the region's sightseeing boom with its own active volcanoes, pristine beaches, picture-perfect towns. It's easy to understand why Americans have moved in here. This is Granada, one of the oldest cities in Nicaragua and in the entire Western Hemisphere. It's charming, it's cheap, and according to the folks we spoke with, perfectly safe. Over at Kathy's Waffle House, we met Leonard McCoy, a former postal worker from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, one of up to 10,000 Americans who've moved to Nicaragua. I like the people the most. They're very kind and friendly. They go out of their way to help you. I can afford it. I can live the, the good life on a postal pension. Also cheap, labor. American businesses have invested hundreds of millions of dollars. Walmart, Kraft, Exxon, Shell, and Cytel, which is spending some $12 million on new telephone call centers, like this one in Managua. Speaking, how can I help you? So the government has set up some special laws that basically exempt us from taxes for a period of 10 to 15 years. Site director Val Vandegreft moved here with doubts. What did you expect? I would have thought of, you know, uh, a war-torn, third-world nation, but I got here, it's a very modern infrastructure, modern malls, it's, it's a very modern, very safe, very nice place to live. Precisely the pitch of pro-Nicaragua, the semi-government agency that promotes foreign investment. Javier Chamorro travels the world saying... Nicaragua is a much better place than people perceive. The perception certainly is that this is an anti-capitalist government. What President Ortega has mainly said is that we need an economic order that is more fair, that is more just, that distributes more equally to all the people. We're showing that the government is willing to promote foreign investment. But Nicaragua is in political turmoil again today. Charges of fraud during recent elections set off violent protests. The U.S. has withheld millions of dollars in aid. Many former Sandinistas are also deeply disappointed with the state of democracy in the country they fought for. Ortega is not the person I supported in the 80s when he was president of Nicaragua. Journalist Carlos Chamorro actively supported the revolution that first brought Ortega to power. But today, Chamorro criticizes Ortega's rule. I think he has evolved into a traditional caudillo. I mean, a strong man who pretends to be beyond uh, institutions, beyond the law. He intimidates people who are uh, in the opposition. In October, Ortega's forces raided Chamorro's offices, <laughs> ostensibly looking for evidence of money laundering. They battered down this door. Why do you think the government raided your offices? I think it's a reprisal, it's a retaliation because of because the kind of investigative journalism that we are doing in this office. They're trying to harass us, they're trying to intimidate us. The offices of a once pro-Ortega feminist group were also raided by the government. They too have criticized him for selling out Sandinista values. Women's rights were one of the cornerstones of the rebellion, but Ortega has now banned abortion currying favor, they say, with the Catholic Church. This has been a government that does not care about the rights of anyone, especially women. How do you reassure a potential American business person that he or she is welcome here? President Ortega doesn't agree to every policy that the U.S. has or to everything in the U.S. model, but it doesn't mean that there's uh, not space to work together respectfully. We need foreign investment. 
but we need a climate that will attract more foreign investment. I don't think there is enough foreign investment in this country. Is there a danger of another civil war here in Nicaragua and perhaps more foreign intervention? Hopefully not. People are tired about war and nobody wants intervention. This is our problem. We will face it and we will solve it. For World Focus, I'm Lynn Schur in Managua, Nicaragua.